Howdy there folks, it's Geist with another Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be doing a review on the exotic Kinetic Bow Wishender as you can see here. Uh, now I know this is a little overdue but I kind of wanted to wait for the rework before I push this out. Uh, now Wishender has a few unique perks here. It's got Queen's Wrath, Broadhead, and Anti-Tank and Fletching and we're going to break each of those down in this video. Uh, now first off, uh, in PvP when you're shooting somebody, Wishender deals 159 damage to the head at perfect draw and 102 damage to the body. What's cool about Wishender is that even if you come to full draw and sit there and hold it for a bit and let it fail, it loses almost no damage. It still deals 157 to the head and 101 to the body. So it's only losing 2 to the head and 1 to the body, respectively. Uh, now why this is unique is that at, at no no matter what point in the draw that Wish Ender is at, you're always going to two-shot somebody in PvP. So you absolutely don't need Oath Keepers, and the reason for that is you can just do the draw canceling. Uh, sort of, not really a glitch, uh, but if you guys know what I'm talking about, when you're holding a bow back in Destiny and you've got it at full draw and it starts to shake, or even at any point, you can press the reload button, let go of the draw, and immediately reapply the draw. So in my case, since I'm on control, it's going to be trigger, X, and trigger. So holding the trigger and then let go, reload, and quickly grab the trigger. And it's going to take a little bit of practice, but then you'll get the hang of it. And essentially what this allows you to do is just to keep that draw up no matter what. And with Wish Ender, that kind of eliminates the need to pre-draw a little bit. You do that first draw and just kind of keep pulling it repeatedly and kind of hold it in that kill shot area and then boom you're ready to go whenever somebody shows up and that's why you don't need oath keepers because at any point in there you've got a four second window to quickly redraw the bow and keep it held uh, and you're not going to lose damage anywhere in there it's always going to two shot no matter where it hits and no matter what point in the draw it is now uh, the queen's wrath perk on this thing gives it true sight when at full draw and while aiming down sights this is at any point after full draw. So after you come to full draw for four solid seconds until that arrow fails and you release it, you've got true sight. You can see people through walls. In PvE, this isn't so useful, but in PvP, this opens up a lot of doors. I mean, you can really, especially in something like, say, Trials of Osiris, where you're communicating with other people, this allows you to gain, like you're seeing right here, you can gain a lot of information uh, on what you're seeing and pass that along to your teammates. And once you kind of get the nuances of it, you learn to watch the character models, you'll be able to tell when somebody's in their super, you'll be able to tell what super it's in, you'll be able to tell exactly what they're doing. Let's say you heard somebody throw a specific type of AOE grenade and you just saw that character throw their arm back, it'll give you a general idea of where it's at. I mean, there's numerous applications for this. And I might be overselling it just a little bit. You might go, oh, well, I don't care if I can watch people through walls. It's not real wall hacks. I can't shoot them. No, you can't, but it could still be valuable information. Uh, but to me, the more powerful thing about this bow is just the fact that you can two-shot them at any point. So if you learn to pace yourself and kind of learn the skill set to it, then it can be an amazingly consistent bow, even if a lot of people aren't going to consider it super powerful because it doesn't have an extremely high TTK. Well, TTK doesn't matter so much with Wish Ender because you should be peak shotting. As long as you're utilizing your cover and utilizing your peak mechanics, then your TTK doesn't matter. You, you choose your TTK at that point. Now, there's two play styles in Crucible that people typically go with. They'll either do uh, blinting or bow swapping, or they'll run it primarily. With Wish Ender, you're going to see most people swapping, as I'm doing right here. Now, I was kind of just doing this, just messing around in a rumble lobby here, but the general idea is what you're going to want to run, if you're going to bow swap with this thing, is you've got to run a 120 hand cannon. It's just going to be the most effective thing. You need to land a hat with Wish Ender, follow up with a headshot or a body shot from your 120 hand cannon. If you miss the headshot with Wish Ender, it's going to be two shots with the hand cannon no matter what, which is not bad because it's still about roughly a one second time to kill. Uh, depending on if your handling is high and that's another thing whatever 120 hand cannon you're using you want to make sure it's got as high handling as possible you also want to be wearing the bow dexterity gauntlet mod and the hand cannon dexterity gauntlet mod um, just to maximize the swap effectiveness of it and i do recommend putting quick access sling on your hand cannon as well because that will stack with all of this so between those two mods 
quick access sling and if you can get high handling it should be a near instant swap and it'll be quick and easy cleanups like you see me doing here now I've got quick draw on my igneous here but I don't have snapshot I just have pretty high handling so that allows me to do some relatively easy cleanups with it if you're running wish ender as your only primary <clears throat> or you're running it primarily uh, I can give you a few options to pair it with uh, my four picks are gonna be slug shotguns sidearms SMGs and my personal favorite right now glaives all of these are fantastic options uh, the slug shotgun is you can swap to it and quickly one tap people in close range if that's what you want to do you want to rely more on special sometimes here and there that's gonna have your one of your best pairings with it simply because if you're not going for the one taps to the head with the slug let's say you body shot somebody with wish ender and you have a high enough handling slug swap to it boom easy body cleanup uh, SMGs and sidearms are kind of self-explanatory uh, depending on the archetype that you're using you can get a pretty fast TTK just with those and they're both very good in close quarters uh, especially on a cleanup after you've just hit them with wish ender uh, and then finally glaives glaives are just fun and they're actually pretty effective too um, there's several craftable ones in the second slot I recommend putting the highest handling on them that you can you can hit them anywhere with wish ender it can just be a body shot um, and then quickly pull out the glaive and then boom just hip fire the glaive at them and it's a quick and easy cleanup and also now you've got a little bit of shield on the glaive so you can kind of fight people with the shield which if you didn't know right now the shields on the glaive are pretty sweet in PvP uh, it allows you to really uh, duel and kind of outlast some of the other specials and at least tank some of their hits while you quickly take them out and glaives in general are just kind of fun in fact if you want to have a really fun little sort of medieval build you can run wish ender a glaive and any eager edge sword in your heavy slot um, which if you didn't already know eager edge swords are pretty effective in pvp especially if you jump up in the air and lunge down on people it's a lot of fun people might hate you but it's fun to use and that pretty much wraps it up as far as wish ender goes in pvp um, definitely learn how to do the draw cancel animation and um, you got you just kinda gotta learn to pace yourself Wish Ender is not nearly as forgiving as a lot of other bows, and despite the fact that it is technically a precision bow, it does still share, uh, there's this little aspect that lightweight bows also have where they just kind of whiff sometimes. And it doesn't have to do with the accuracy, because Wish Ender has 80 accuracy, but something to do with Wish Ender and those bows, I think they just have a slight projectile speed even though Bungie says and other people will tell you that it's max projectile speed they're basically hit scan at full draw well that may be true but still there's just there's this whiffiness here and there that kinda happens with the two of those and it doesn't really seem to happen with precision bows and even if you bring it to full draw and then let it fail that doesn't really change precision bows still hit just fine doing this tactic whereas Wish Ender and the others don't um, but either way I think it's a great bow in PvP, and you guys should definitely give it a shot. Now in PvE, oh my goodness, Wish Ender is an absolutely amazing weapon. Uh, ever since the recent rework, uh, Bungie has just drastically increased the effectiveness of this weapon. The other two perks on Wish Ender are the Anti-Taken Fletching and Broadhead. Now you know what Queen's Wrath does, it lets you see through walls, and it's mostly good for PvP. Queen's, uh, not Queen's Wrath, Anti-Taken Fletching makes the bow significantly more accurate. I guess that's why it has 80 accuracy. Uh, and it deals bonus damage to Taken, so it says. I haven't really got a good way to test this. As, uh, as far as I can see, the differences between the regular enemies and their Taken counterparts, uh, they have some sort of armor differences, so it's kind of hard to tell if it's actually dealing more damage. But we're just going to believe what it says. Um, either way, doesn't matter if it does. It could it could be lying and, and not deal more damage or, or make it seem that we're whatever. It doesn't actually say it deals more damage, but a lot of sources say that it does. It doesn't matter. The bow itself deals absolutely absurdly high damage now. Uh, Broadhead used to deal damage on the entrance and exit of the arrow. So it would deal two instances of damage to every target. Now it deals three instances of, lar of damage on larger targets. Some smaller targets may only take two, and occasionally you'll only see one damage number. This is due in part to where you're aiming. So whenever you're aiming at enemies with Wish Ender, you want to always either be aiming for the crit spot, or aim for the thickest part of them. So for most humanoid enemies, like the Fallen, aim for the chest area. 
servitors, brigs, things like that. Bigger enemies just shoot right straight through the middle of them. And it's going to deal three instances of damage. And this deals absolutely massive damage. It, it chunks yellow bars. There isn't a single red bar in the game that can take a straight on shot to wish hinder. And that's not even a precision shot. Um, well, I'm sorry. Briggs and Wyverns will be the two red bars that can. Uh, that being said, when you're appropriately leveled, this thing will three tap a Wyvern to the body, which is absolutely nuts for a primary. It deals the most burst damage of any primary in the game, as far as I'm aware. Uh, Le Monarch is a close second. Um, but even then, it actually still falls short and doesn't deal as much damage, even with the full ticks of poison. So the fact that Wishender just does it in one fell swoop is neat. And as I'm sure you just saw me doing with this bow a second ago, it also has intrinsic anti-barrier, which is great. Because in my opinion, barriers are probably the most annoying champions in the game. So the fact that one of my favorite weapons now has that is, is just awesome. You can absolutely destroy barriers, and that's not the only thing. It means that this bow can pierce through any of those everything-proof shields that enemies throw up. So, phalanxes, knights, uh, and then, of course, uh, hobgoblins even, when they're doing that little immunity thing. Wish Ender will shoot through all of that. So, you can still go through the shields, go through whatever. And that actually couples nicely with Broadhead, because not only will it go through their shields, it'll also go through them. Wish Ender can pierce through as many enemies line up at once, so sometimes you'll get some sweet collateral kills with it, as you might have seen in some of my other videos. This does also work in PvP. Uh, it's essentially just armor piercing, but it goes through, you know, however many enemies happen to be lined up. And then with Broadhead, it seems to increase the damage somewhat when it does pass through multiple enemies to the enemies that are behind it. Um, and, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's absolutely the king of primaries to me now as far as PvE content goes. And anything with barriers, any sort of grandmasters, whatever, I'm bringing this. It's essentially just like a primary air ballist. I mean, there's no reason to use air ballist anymore with this thing. Uh, the other thing is with match game, just with wishing their sheer damage that it has now, um, it's typically able to pop most shields in three hits. And, you know, that's a little slow just because wish Ender is a slower bow. But I can't think of any other primary that can pop shields in match game with three shots unless they're using something like um, adaptive munitions or, you know, well, obviously if you're using the right element, it just pops it immediately, but that's not the point. And as you can see here when I'm fighting this boss, um, I, just, I just went into a, a, um, a nightfall here uh, solo just to show you how easy it was to just use, and I'm using two bows too. Uh, one was for the overloads and the other for the barriers. And I'm just damaging the boss pretty much just with Wish Ender. Every time I hit him, I'm just hitting him for little chunks. You can see his health jumping. And it's just a ton of fun to use. So, um, I don't know about you guys, but I I've been having a blast with this thing. If you don't want to use it in PvP, that's perfectly fine. And I would understand why. It is a bow. Not everybody likes bows in PvP. But in PvE, this thing is an absolute powerhouse. Um, it does super high damage to everything, it one-shots a ton of things, can even one-shot some yellow bars, and you can do crazy respectable damage. If you run out of special ammo and heavy ammo and you've got just Wish Ender left, you're going to be fine. You're still going to be able to do respectable damage. And with that, y'all, that's all I got to say about Wish Ender. Uh, I think it's a pretty wonderful weapon and I've enjoyed using it. Uh, it's been a whole lot of fun. If you guys have any other questions about this thing, feel free to post it in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Anything I might have missed or just something you want to know about it. Um, but as always, folks, thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful evening.